joining us in the studio to discuss more on NIMET's rainfall prediction and ways to avert disaster in the year 2020 is Professor Emmanuel Oladipo, uh, a climatologist and climate change expert. I want to thank you so much indeed for coming on the news at 10. Thank you. At this time, uh, this is what NIMET is telling us. Yes. A normal to above normal rainfall expected generally in yes. the country this year. Yeah. Simplify that for us. Well, it simply means that uh, we should be getting between um, nine to 10 months of rainfall in the south and about five to maximum six months in the north, with a total of ranging from maybe up to about five to seven to 800 millimeter in the northern part, but over 3,000 in the extreme southern part. The middle belt may be receiving about 1,500 to 2,000 millimeter of rainfall. But that's a global picture. So it's not going to tell us an adversary role that NIMET is playing very well by giving us that global picture. The next stage is to simplify it further to be able to really pinpoint what may be happening on a monthly basis later. Is this as a result of uh, the climate change effects? You just hear just about everybody talking about this climate change now. I don't know if they're just um, imagining things or this is an actuality. <laughs> just clarify that one for us because a lot of people are concerned. If it is climate change and you are having 10 months of rainfall uh, in a 12-month cal calendar, in the south, the what does that south. mean for us? You know, the, well, I think what we... The global language of climate change has gone so wide that uh, many are not using the terminology correctly anymore. Uh, climate is a dynamic system. It's a dynamic thing. It changes every time. It changes the past. It's changing now and continues to change. But what we are talking about, when we are talking about a year or two years, we are talking about the variability in the climatic situation. And that variability can be from what it was some years ago to what it was two years ago, or what it's likely to be in another five years. So it doesn't mean that we are having um, a complete shift. That's a, it's a very gradual process. So if you talk about 10 months, it can be in this extreme southern part, and about four or five months in the extreme northern part, which has always been the normal pattern over a period of time. But what NIMET is saying is that we are not sure of the exact thing. Uh, all these predictions are only about 65 to 70% correct because you cannot predict it. And it's based on understanding the dynamics, what really produces this rainfall. They use a system, what we call El Nino Enso method, which uses the temperature conditions prevailing over the Pacific Ocean. And the changes in these temperature conditions determine whether we are going to get a lot of rain or we are going to get normal average of what we used to get or below normal. This year, they're thinking the El Nino is of normal condition and therefore our rainfall condition may not be too different from what it has been in the past, uh, a few years ago. But that does not prevent us from having some extreme events that can lead to flash floods. In last year, at just at that point, yes. last year we had terrible rain situations, flooding yeah. everywhere. Yeah. We had dams that were released because yeah. if they don't release the waters, it might just bust the dams. Yeah. Are we going to have a similar situation as we did last year where waters were just so high, passing even the expectations of NIMET? There's nothing we say we will not have. And I think my own advice to the country is let us prepare ourselves that because what we are talking about, uh, we don't have the time to be talking about the mathematics. When we talk about average condition, you know, it's a long time thing you are taking. That does not mean there won't be occasional huge amount of water that can be delivered because the warm temperature that we are witnessing now, the high temperature that Nigeria is witnessing now, is capable of generating high intensity storms at intervals, which is what really produces the flood, not the uh, amount of rain from time to time. As long as the rainfall is gentle and it's not, but when it comes heavy within a 24 hour period, then you are likely to get those. So it's not saying that we cannot get those things, but my own advice is that let everybody get prepared so that if it comes, we'll be able to tame it very well. I must thank you so much indeed for talking to us, a climatologist and a climate change expert, Professor Emmanuel Oladipo.
uh, formerly of the ABU, Aladapo, uh, <laughs> of Amadabilo <laughs> University, my, my department for that matter. Many thanks indeed, sir, thank you. for coming on the news at 10. Thank you, thank you. And to education matters, the federal government is seeking an all-inclusive effort to improve the sector. Part of that effort is the ongoing renovation of primary and secondary schools across the country aimed at getting more children back to school. The Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals, Mrs. Adejoke Orilokbe Adefulure, explained this in an event to mark the 2020 International Day for Education in Abuja. Education is a source of empowerment and holds the key to unlock huge potentials for any nation. However, it is suffering a major setback across the world. According to the United Nations Education Fund, 258 million children are currently out of school, while 617 million children and adolescents cannot read and do basic mathematics. 10.3 million of these children are in Nigeria. 60% of them are girls. The agency adds that most of them are refugees, internally displaced persons and people living with disabilities. The almighty education. At this year's International Day for Education, the focus is on how the education sector can be improved to reduce the number of out-of-school children. We must do everything humanly possible, everything politically possible, every movement we can make to ensure that all our children all over Nigeria, in the rural community, in the riverine areas, in the cities, everywhere in Nigeria must return to school. The Ministry of Education is working with stakeholders to ensure the implementation of the ministerial strategic plan. The plan includes strategies to reduce the number of out-of-school children. I wish to let you know that the administration of President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, is committed to quality education. To these effects, a ministerial strategic plan, 2018 to 2022, titled Education for Change, was developed to address the challenges confronting the Nigerian education sector. Only education has the power to sustainably change society's behavior as necessitated by the challenge of global warming. This is why UNESCO has called all its member states to incorporate environmental education into their curricula. The consensus here is that a collaboration between the private sector and government institutions will address the challenges in the nation's education sector. And now to diplomatic matters. The Indian government appears interested in deepening its relationship with Nigeria in the areas of trade and military affiliation. This indication is coming from the Indian High Commissioner to Nigeria, Ambassador Abe Takur, who says that the government is prepared to collaborate with Nigeria in addressing piracy in the Gulf of Guinea. He made remarks when he hosted guests who gathered to mark the Republic Day in Abuja. We deeply value Nigeria's steadfast support to India at multilateral fora. We stand together with Nigeria in its fight against terrorism. Last year, the first ever military exercise between India and Africa as a whole, focusing on counter-terrorism, was held. And Indian and Nigerian defense establishments are developing a long-range IED detector device together. On the matter of piracy in the Gulf of Guinea, we understand the challenges faced by Nigeria and express our sincere gratitude to Nigerian authorities for assistance in ensuring safe release of kidnapped seafarers. I am confident that our ties with Nigeria will gain further momentum in 2020. We are Nigeria's trade, largest trading partner and Nigeria is our largest trading partner in Africa. Our bilateral trade grew by 18% in 2018-19 and has so far grown by over 7% in the current financial year. In all these events, Indian companies who have invested nearly $15 billion in Nigeria and are the second largest employer in Nigeria after the government of Nigeria itself 
will be encouraged to do more business with Nigeria to our mutual benefit. More stories now. The Nigerian Immigration Service says that it has apprehended nine girls suspected of being trafficked through the airport in Lagos to Lebanon, Cairo, Dubai and India. According to the statement from the agency, four of the girls claim to be traveling to take up employment abroad without knowing their employers. Neither were they aware of the nature of jobs they were going to do there. The NIS says that it believes that the nine girls had no credible mission for embarking on their journeys and were therefore refused departure from Lagos. You're watching the news at 10 on Channels Television, reaching you live from Lagos. Let's switch gears now, shall we, to business news with Teniola Shobowale. Thanks, Gimba. Welcome to Business News. Crude oil prices saw their worst week in seven months this week as the coronavirus outbreak and demand implications pressured prices. International benchmark Brent crude shed about 6.4% for the week, settling at $60.69 a barrel, while U.S. crude futures ended the week down more than 7% at $54.19 a barrel. According to the General Administration of Customs, a a slowdown in China's economy would impact demand because China is the world's largest crude oil importer after importing a record 10.12 million barrels per day in 2019. China is also the second largest oil consumer behind the United States. On Thursday, JP Morgan said that if the coronavirus crisis develops into a SARS-style epidemic, $5 per barrel could be shaved from oil prices. Now, gross credit for the of the banking sector increased by two trillion naira in seven months. This is according to the governor of the central bank, Mr. Godwin Mefele, while speaking to journalists after the just concluded first monetary policy committee for the year 2020. The Apex Bank governor explains that gross credit in the industry grew by two trillion naira between May and December 2019. Credit to the private sector also grew to 13.61 percent in December 2019, from 12.282 percent during the previous month. Consequently, sectoral distribution of credit between the end of May 2019 and the end of December 2019 were as follows: manufacturing sector 446.44 billion naira. General retail and consumer loans, 419.02 billion naira. General commerce, 248.48 billion naira. Agriculture, forestry and fishing, 160.94 billion naira. Information and communication, 156.47 billion naira. Finance and insurance, 129.87 billion naira. Construction, 86.54 billion naira. And transportation and, and, and storage, 68.61 billion naira, among others. The bullish trend continued at the Nigerian stock market this week, with the All Share Index gaining 0.03% week on week. The cement subsector driven gains were offset by sell offs across the equities of companies in the consumer goods and banking sectors. The Industrial Goods Index led gains following investors' interest in Dangote Cement, Boa Cement, and Wapco. Gains were also recorded in the insurance and oil and gas sectors. However, the consumer goods and banking sectors recorded losses following sell-offs of Nestle and GT Bank. A total turnover of 1.27 billion shares worth 22.762 billion naira in 21,156 deals were traded this week. 32 equities appreciated in price during the week led by Law Union and Rock, while NCR Nigeria PLC tops a list of 28 decliners. And that's business news tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Teniola Shubawale. Back to you, Gimba. Thanks indeed, Teniola.
Well, still ahead on the news at 10, Nigerian international Kelechi Ihenacho's lone goal sends Leicester through to the English FA Cup fifth round. That's the sports news. Stay with us.